Hello everybody, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. And today I want to talk about something which is like a, a skill and actually two skills which are always in demand in cyber security. I mean, I was looking around at all the top requirements, you know, most of the skills which are requirement, which are in demand for 2024. And pretty much all of them had this skill which is risk assessments and threat modeling. And you know, this is a skill which is like incredibly important if you plan to work in cybersecurity. It does not matter whether you are a CISO with 20 years of experience or you are a cybersecurity engineer just starting out. You need the ability to do risk assessments. You need to know how to do risk assessments. You need to understand how threat models work. And that is what I want to talk about today. One thing I've seen that most people get confused about risk assessments and threat modeling. Like they don't know which is which or they think both are the same or they're not able to understand what are the key differences and similarities between the two. I'm not going to teach you how to do risk assessments or threat modeling because I've already made videos on that. I'll put the link in the description. You can click on those if you're completely new to risk assessments or threat modeling. But in this video, I want to talk about how they differ from each other and when to use which, what are the benefits of each. So that really, I, I always feel this concept is not clear for most people. So th th that's what I want to focus on today. If you're new to this channel, please do like and subscribe to this channel so you get notified when I release new videos. So let's get started, guys, when I talk about risk assessments and threat modeling. Let's start with risk assessments. I mean, if you have ever worked in cybersecurity, you would be familiar with this whole risk assessment thing, right? I mean, you would have, if you have ever run a security scan, you'll get a report showing high, medium, low risk or any audit report, you will see that high, medium, low risk. Basically, this is a pretty fundamental skill in cyber security. And if you want to move up the ladder, if you're planning to become a CISO or a head of information security, you need to know how to do risk assessments. And it's not even a choice as most standards do require it, right? And most importantly, it prioritizes what you need to do. And because I hate to tell you this, you, you as a cyber security professional, your department, it does not have unlimited time and it does not have unlimited money. So you need to make sure that you're focusing on the right things. And that's where risk assessment comes in, right? How do you know what to do, like which risks to focus on? What if you focus on the wrong thing and that was not even a good, like a proper risk to focus on and the major issues you miss out. So this is where risk assessment comes in. And most importantly, it is able to translate risk into a language that management can understand. Why is that important? Because uh, I hate to tell you this, but management is the one who's going to approve your budgets. The CEO is not going to give you money if he's not convinced that uh, the thing which you're talking about, it has any risk. So that's why you need to the ability to do risk assessments. Your, your risks will not be taken seriously if you do not have it. And it's also a requirement of most standards, like I said. I mean, be it PCI DSS, NIST, ISO 27001, almost always, one of the first steps is to set the scope and do a risk assessment. Why? Because that is what will guide you, right? That is what will set you apart. And it is also a requirement if, if you get audited, the auditor can ask, why did you buy this software, buy this product instead of that product? Why did you focus here instead of that? And you'll be able to show, look, we did a risk assessment and that's what we were able to justify it with. And you must have seen this matrix, right? For risk assessments, like there's a probability, like how often can this risk happen? And what is the impact if it does happen? And based on that, you're able to assign it a risk. This is a very, very simple risk matrix. I mean, I've deliberately kept it very simple, but that's how uh, risk assessments work. And that's how you're able to find out. Now, what are the problems with risk assessments? Well, first of all, they are not application specific. Risk assessments are traditionally very, very high level, right? They do not tell you how an application is working, how the data is flowing. It does not break down an application. And honestly, it's too slow for fast paced like environments. You know, as you might have 50, 60 applications coming in a month. How do you do it? Risk assessments are really very slow. If you've ever done one, I'm sure you must be familiar with that. And it doesn't really give you details about how the application is, right? It doesn't tell you how the application is flowing and it's not really suited. It's more suited for high level risk assessments, right? High level risks, but not for applications. So this is where the problem comes in. How do you know what threats an application is for, for facing, right? From the SQL injection, maybe cross-site scripting, privilege escalations, what are the people that can compromise it? So this is where the concept of threat modeling comes in. Threat modeling is a type of risk assessment only. It's not like a completely different thing from risk assessment. 
it, you, you can think of it as a specialized type of risk assessment. And simply put, it's a structured way to identify and prioritize potential threats to an application. So you might be thinking this is the same definition as a risk assessment, and you're right, but it is more application focused. What are the questions you ask? Like, what are we building? What are we making from an application? What can go wrong? And then what can we do about it? And there are many, many uh, risk assessment, uh, threat modeling tools, sorry, available. Uh, there are methodologies available. The most common is Stride, which basically divides the threats into these six ones, which is spoofing, uh, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. Every single threat you can think about for an application, believe me, any application you take and you think about a threat, believe me when I say it will fall into these six uh, uh my, what do you call threat categories okay this was i think initially developed by microsoft and it they pretty much became a completely industry standard they i think they also have a free tool which you can use but honestly i mean simply you can use a whiteboard and draw it out and usually what you do is you draw a diagram and you then you think about the risks which might be impacting so if you have a web application right you'll think about okay how does the data flow who, who are the attackers how the application is focusing what are the different trust levels right you might have a web and application layer you might have a database layer what are the threats that can happen and based on that you basically think about the risks and the threats which are there so that is what threat modeling is now this is where the like confusion comes in so when people say they think we only can use one they actually can use both but to use both first you need to understand what are the key differences so this is like a detailed table of I've developed, which tells you what are the differences. First of all, let's what the focus is. Risk assessments are broad, okay? And they cover like physical, administrative aspects of risks. Threat modeling focuses specifically on applications. And the objective is you get the likelihood and the impact of risk assessments. And in threat modeling, you are thinking about what are the threats against your software and your applications and what are the technical controls you can put. And generally the scope is very broad. Whereas threat modeling is very narrowly focused on the cybersecurity threats to applications. And the methodology is also a little bit different because here you start with the uh, look at the likelihood and the impact, and then you use that risk matrix. Whereas with threat modeling, you identify the assets, then you use something like stride, right? And you use like a diagram, and then you identify the threats and the countermeasures, right? And usually just remember this risk assessments are high level, whereas threat models are more detailed. And what are the outcomes of this? With risk assessments, you get a prioritized list of risks, right? With threat modeling, you get a detailed diagram showing what are the threats, what are the applications and the systems, and when should you use it? Well, with risk assessments, it's recommended for at, at the strategic planning stage for like a project, whereas threat modeling usually comes in during the design and development phases. And what are the benefits? It gives you a risk for risk assessments. You get a high level view of your company's risk, right? And then it helps you to align where you need to focus on. Whereas with threat modeling, it gives you specific identification of what threats you need to focus on. And then you can focus on those like SQL injections and cross-site scripting. And what are the limitations of each? Well, risk assessments, like you said, they're not detailed, right? So some application specific threats like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, elevation privileges, uh, OS injection, those sort of things you will get, probably miss out in a risk assessment. Whereas with a threat modeling, you'll get those details, but the broader level organization risk will miss out. So you'll get a good idea of say, what are the issues with the application, but then you might not look at a high level. What are the compliance risks? What are the disaster recovery risks? Those sort of things, a risk assessment will only highlight. So let's take a look, right? If I had a case study, so supposing John Doe, he's the, like the CISO at a company and they have been expanding like crazy, right? They are like getting more and more applications and more and more companies. And being the CISO, he knows that a lot of cybersecurity risk can come in, some compromises that could happen. So this is where he needs to make sure that he's identifying the right risks, right? So, and since the company is operating in a very challenging environment, right? As they, they are expanding, new and new applications, systems and processes are coming in. So the threat area is increasing. So he needs a proper approach to identify and know what risks are there. So based on that, John decided to implement like a proper risk management approach, right? Combining risk assessment and threat modeling because he wants the best of both worlds. He wants to know at a high level because he's a CISO. He wants to know at a high level what are the key risks that are there. But he also wants to drill down 
into each application and focus on the one. So based on that, John starts a risk assessment, right? They identify all the assets, what are the data, what are the systems, what are the processes, what are the risks to them based on the likelihood and the impact using the like the matrix, which we saw. And based on that, they get, he gets like a comprehensive view of the risk landscape and he knows what are the third party providers, what are the data storage, what sort of cyber attacks are there. And one of the best things about this, he also knows now what are the key applications, what are the mission critical applications for his company. And he uses this list and then he drills down using threat modeling. So he focuses on the key applications which are there. Like say example, taking the company's core financial transaction system, they do a threat modeling. So they map out the system architecture. They identify what are the threats like SQL injection, uh, buffer overflows, insider threats, and what are the threats for these, right? And using something like Stride, they are able to pinpoint specific weaknesses within this mission critical application, right? Maybe the input validation is not there, logging is not there. And based on that, he's able to use both of them, right? Risk assessment for broad, threat modeling for more detail, and he's able to get a very comprehensive view of what are the key risks and that allows him to focus on the areas that need to be focused on. So you can see what are the conclusion of this. Using this combined approach, he's able to really improve the security posture. So he's able to get both a broad level view and a very detailed high level view. And so that, that this is what I wanted to show you guys. Think of this as a mini like crash course on threat modeling and risk assessments and how they work together. And this is critical especially nowadays when you have software supply chain attacks happening, you have so many issues happening, this ability to identify risks, both at a high level and a low level, it is extremely crucial, especially if you are in cybersecurity, you need to understand how to do this and that will really take you very, very far. So like I said, this was what the topic was about. If you're completely new to risk assessments and threat modeling, I will put the videos in the description. Uh, I've already talked about this before, so you can use that also and then come back to this video. So I hope this was useful, everybody. Uh, please do like and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.